Welcome to the 25A podcast. It's part two. I don't know why I said it. <laughs> why like why every pirate. time I do this, I do it pirate. terribly. <laughs> like I have like, I have like, I see the words in my head that I want to say. And then and when then I say them. you turn into a pirate. Yeah. And then I'm like an angry pirate. Um, <laughs> so we hope you guys enjoyed part one. Um, you know, we don't, we don't want to, you know, hear ourselves talk too much here on part two. Um, but, you know, if I can just say that, like, you know, we're all incredibly grateful for everybody who listens and 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 watches if you have like a smart tv with like youtube or facebook on the apple tv you know um it means a lot and and we hope that um or at least i hope i don't know if you agree that you know these these are one of two at least one of two things informative or entertaining yes of um, course. and if we can inform and entertain at the same time i think that's a that's a that's a that's double whammy or, or two touchdowns at the same time, which is Woo! impossible. Um, you know, like Jerry Rice, Joe Montana, two balls in the end zone. Um, <laughs> or four. Uh, <laughs> Whatever. So um, we just want to say that, like, you know, we're incredibly uh, grateful and fortunate, uh, especially in our lives, to be able to do, you know, what we do and, and, and to bring stuff like this to uh, all of you. And I could be talking to zero people or I could be talking to 100 people. I have no idea who we're talking to. So... Um, Anything else? No. Thank you. Why do you let me just rant? You don't even participate. You're because just like, yeah, whatever. It's like the remix. You go, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> so in my head, I'm like, it's the Marky remix. <laughs> <laughs> I let you go. Um, all right. Let's get on with the intro. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like yeah, but also at the you. same time, like you don't want them walking into like what the f- exactly. You yeah, know what I mean, like, like honestly, the, the psychology of it, right? Yeah, yeah. I and I, I and I respect that totally. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I get that. Um, you know, I remember it was in my immediate family had the got the green light to come down first, and they don't want like a wave of people coming down. Sure. So it was like my my parents and my siblings, and oh, you know, here we go talking about Joe. Yeah, Joe walks in and. I remember one of the first things, not initially the first thing, but one of the first things Joe said to me was like, I should have just fucking gone with you, man. And in my mind, I'm like, you know, every time Joe and I deployed together, our first two deploy, we're never together. Right. Initially, you know, the whole Saving Private Ryan thing, you know, yeah. if an incident happened, or they you pull, don't want to put the siblings together. Right. You yeah. both get killed, and we're, you know, my parents no. just lost two kids right. in one incident. So, right. and I, you know, and I'm like, what the fuck were you going to do, Joe? Yeah. Like, and I'm, you know, you're trying to tell him, like, look, man, and I, with confidence, I could say I'm, I'm in a, a decent mood like I'm I'm not oh this sucks man like I'm yeah, smiling was me? I'm not yeah. I, mean, I mean looking at those photos too I'm sitting there doing the shocker like, <laughs> like in my photos like well at least I you mean, weren't doing true. the minivan <laughs> oh god what the hell's a minivan <laughs> well four in the back one in the front <laughs> <laughs> I never heard that. Yeah, you're welcome. You can use that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, no, no, you're good. <laughs> but All and, of our listeners right now are like, off. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a NEPA thing. I don't know. <laughs> so, All right, so he's in there. Right, and it seems and like there's some sur- like survivor's guilt I or something. Joe, I, know, I definitely know Joe felt guilty. I mean, Joe, Joe and I are twins. All right? We're twins. Okay. I mean, we were like look-alike twins. We looked alike, but we're fraternal. Twins, and I didn't realize we're. I, I always thought we we're identical to my mom. Said, No, you're paternal. Like, my whole life, this literally was just probably a conversation like three years ago. My mother was like, We look pretty much alike. And she's like, No, but anyway, we're there's still that, like, yeah. since we're you know, we're born together. And what, um, I you know, in my mind, here I am at Walter Reed Army Medical Center, and you think of it, oh, all these wounded vests there is such a somber place. I gotta tell you, man, everybody's in. Not a good mood, but I think when there's a lot of people understanding what you're going through, I don't care if this guy lost an arm and I lost a leg, there's still that sense of, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, yeah, man, we'll be, we're going to be okay. Like, my time at Walter Reed, I thought was great. You know, like, I was, I learned how to snowboard again with a special prosthetic leg. I went to Colorado to do that. I was playing sled hockey. Um, in my mind, I felt like life was... Uh, Is this terrible you know, for me to say that you're 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 actually, like, living more yeah i it's not because well, of it's not bad to say like you know it's, it's something i had to think about like 
you know, it opened my mind so much. Like with, at Walter with Reed. everything, at, not just at Walter Reed, just this whole experience in general and what I'm about to say to everybody out there. Yeah. You know, it, you know, eventually it didn't happen overnight. I mean, there was a lot of fucking hardships. Yeah. But mm -hmm everything that went through and we're going to get to that right now. So my time at Walter Reed, like I said, it was great. You know, and it's like that culture of the military never left. Like, you know, army and Marines are duking out what branch is better. <laughs> Nobody yeah. likes the air force still like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it was one, there was a realization. I remember I had to walk with two canes when I first started getting used to walking with a prosthetic leg. All right. right. And I'm above the knee amputee. And I remember just not in a good mood. And this leg was in an air cast for a while because it was still all fucked up, my right leg. Yeah. And I remember walking in a Walter Reed, or walking in a physical therapy. They called it the, uh, the MATC, military, M-A-T-C. I forget what it stood for. But anyway, I remember walking in there and there was a triple amputee doing push-ups with just his prosthetic arm on. All right. He's doing no push -ups. Oh my gosh. Right? Like, and he's not wearing his legs. Right. And I think he saw I was in a piss, pissy mood and he's doing push ups and he just sits up on his mat. <laughs> you know, he's a triple MVT now. Right, and right. he says, look at this paper cut looking in. <laughs> <laughs> and I fucking like, you know what? Through the canes, I got another bitch about it. <laughs> like, Thanks like, for the perspective. It, you know, and I, and I think to myself, just fucking be patient or I'll just don't like, this isn't going to happen overnight. Right. And I needed that kick in the ass, but that was my point. It seemed like a lot of people were in such a good mood, even in the shit happening to them. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and it, cause we're all like, if I went to the Wilkes-Barre VA and did all this shit, I want to be who I am now. I know that for a fact. <clears throat> I'm looking at the guys that are way ahead of me in their injury right and have been there for like a year or so and seeing what they're accomplishing and I'm like well I guess I'm gonna do that someday because they're doing it you know what I mean so yeah it's mm -hmm. incredible you know you think about it that way and it's like and I've never met the passion I mean is that the it. human spirit is that oh my goodness and I think too you gotta remember your surroundings and this is just life in general this isn't just like the uh, medical portion like of how good Walter Reed was right your culture and your surroundings the people you're with they make who you are. Like you know, we always hear, like if if my doctors and my physical therapists were out there saying you're a piece of shit, you're never gonna get there. You you tend to think you would think that, you know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. But everyone was so uplifting. They wanted to encourage you to step out of your comfort zone, uh, try something new. And I think up here, man, that fucking helps you a lot. And I, mm -hmm. you know, and I look at it as a kid who was growing up. Who's going to be more successful? The one with their parents saying you're a piece of shit, you're never going to mount anything, or the ones that are encouraging them to do stuff like that. You see what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same thing. That that never ends in life. I mean, that's just not when you're a kid. Your surroundings when you get older too. It's the same exact way. You know, if you're working for a boss who just c continues to put you down all the time. I don't give a fuck how much money you're making. If that's the culture and the environment you're in, you might start believing that, even though you're not like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Piece of shit will me. That's when depression starts and whatever me. And I'm not a psychologist, but I just think that's an abusive relationship. Really, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. And it doesn't, you know, <laughs> to get way off topic here, I always hear like in uh, Christianity, honor thy father and mother, one of our, yeah, yeah. one of our, um, our, uh, t you know, our 10 commandments. And I'm like, no, yeah, yeah. that's, I'm sorry. No, that doesn't yeah. like, I don't believe in that at all. It It's parents performance. All right. If, yeah, just because you you're my you dad shoot. or my mom doesn't mean you should be like, right. you know. Anyway, so I just I just want to throw that out there. I have to do shit. I have my Stacy thing. Oh, mom and dad are not going to part three feet. Yeah. <laughs> I love yeah. when you I do that. I, yeah, I don't. I, 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 think, I think that there's a misconception that, you know, just because you're the parent means that you have now created... You, you should now be viewed as a deity and your yeah. child should be your followers and yes. mm -hmm. and agree with everything that mm -hmm. you say because, you know, th th they're they're infallible. They're not fallible or infallible either. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. parents, parents are just like parents are just us growing up and had kids, <laughs> you know. So I, I agree yeah. with your sentiment. One hundred and ten percent. As much as I love my family, like I love them, but I don't have to like them all the time. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, so. I do you get out of Walter send, Reed? Yes, I do. I'm going to send a text real quick because I have a meeting and I'm going to push that back. All right, good. And I don't mean I'm to gonna, be rude right now. Because I'm going to push my birthday back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to push my birthday back for Earl. All right. I am... Uh, Who are you sending it to? You don't have to give names. Just. No, I mean... He's a, a busy, busy person. <laughs> He's a totally fucking busy person. Yeah. All right. All right now I want to talk about Trump. Nope. No. <laughs> 
Nope. You ain't gonna no, I'm do totally it. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> ain't gonna do it. So, anyway. I'm sorry about that. The red I, light I is really fine. rude at me. Okay. No, that's not rude. That's so, not rude. Um, We're going to keep that all in, by the way. <laughs> oh, yes. I hope you do, man. Yeah. So, well, look at this Here's douche. Look at this douche bag on the phone, man. So, <laughs> better not be anyway, a date. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm on the phone. Um, I'm on the phone, shit. Now I'm this is my train of thought here. So anyway, I'm at Walter Reed. I eventually leave Walter Reed and, you know, I think about that uh, hardship and those things and how different my brother was when I lost my leg. Okay. I mean, you, you know, saw a total difference when he walked in that room. I feel like I did. And I think his culture, his culture being, a, he's now a full-time corrections officer. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's a job. I got to be real. That is a job that. It's very, 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 they don't get enough credit because I think, you know, what I, I truly do believe that. And watching my brother and meeting his CEO friends and some of my friends who are also CEOs that I served with and seeing the struggles they go through of what happens at work, you know, on the Paul, I won't get too much into it, but that's a job. It's and, a tough and, job. And a lot of, I'm a public speaker now and I speak to CEOs a lot. <clears throat> right. Um, in the federal side and, and my hats off and I hope they're listening out there. My hats off to you guys. Cause it's a job I wouldn't want to do. And yeah. I see how it can affect a person. I truly like, but anyway. Wait, if you if you could choose to go back into com- over active there. combat. You don't even have to finish that over there. You would, so you would choose. Over there in a heartbeat. Absolutely. Compared to. Absolutely. Yep. Wow. Okay. Absolutely. All right. You know. All right. Keep um, going. But, okay. So, you know, here's where the, you know, that was the easy part. All that shit we just talked about was yeah, everything the Everything you just part. fucking went through. Everything was the easy part. Yeah, it yeah. was cake. Yep. <laughs> and then. I'm out of the army at this point, December 18, 2010. I get a phone call from my mother. Um, she's, uh, um, she leaves me a voicemail. Um, I was, I saw my phone ring. I was in the bathroom and I was putting gel. I had my, I was literally just putting gel in my hair when she called me. So I just let her go to voicemail. Well, nobody wants to touch their phone with hair gel. <laughs> right, right. So yeah. I washed my hands, listened to voicemail. Earl called me immediately. She sounded hysterical. Yeah. And I called back. And she just says my name, very, very somber. And I'm like, what's going on? And she just says, Joe committed suicide. Get the fuck. I hit that fucking floor and screamed so fucking loud. You know, the girl I was dating was right there. And I, she heard my mom say it. She started crying. And Wait, just those four words. That's all she said to you, Earl. Earl, Joe. And then I, what's, what's the matter? Joe committed suicide and you know she's still on the phone and I'm I, I don't know what I said after that but the next two things I did I'll never forget I as soon as I hung up I went right into the kitchen and I poured every ounce of alcohol I had in that house down the drain my dad is an alcoholic and I just knew if I went this route right now wait you literally I, wait you literally walked out of the bathroom I was in, well when I called her back I was in the living room and I <laughs> right but so and you I, walk out of the living room and then you take all the alcohol in your yep. home and yep. down the drain yep honest God that's honest God what I did and immediately after that I walked right into the bedroom where the computer was and I shut my Facebook down they are the first two things I did this is before this is 2010 I don't think there was any real other social media right and I just shut it all the fuck down and you I'm didn't want to like, see it I, no I just didn't want to I knew I was just going to get bombarded and I, and I, I, I'm trying to <sighs> process. Yeah. And I'm and, and eventually and then the phone, the, the phone's still on my cell phone phone starts ringing. Um, every, like people started coming over like, they, you know, I, I'd only pick up the phone for certain people, right. Like, you know, and it, it's all in good intentions, but I, I just knew I, I didn't know how to handle this. What the, f- how did I get this second chance at life? And Joe take his only one away. Right. And, I, and I'm not going to go into it. Joe and I were not on the best terms at then. We had a little, you know, I'm not going to get into it then, so which I think made it 10 times worse how I took it. Does that make sense? Yes. Like, it was just like, holy shit, Joe. You know, and <sighs> the next few days, like, I went into, I feel like I went into just this big fucking zombie mode. Not like, but I, I just had a mission. I had to prep for Joe's funeral. And what came with that was, you know, picking out the casket, you know, going to a funeral home and carving out the priest's funeral home and all that shit, you know, with uh, the church, all that. 
And it kept me so busy and I knew exactly what we're doing, but I was so occupied in it. I wasn't even really thinking about it. Like I would forget to eat. You yeah. know what I mean? And I wouldn't even like, well, I'm not even hungry. Why the fuck do I eat? But I, I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to do this. Right. I need to do this. I need to fucking do this. I need to, I, I get, I got to take care of Joe. I got to, you know, and after his funeral, like that's when the heavy shit started. I feel feeling sorry for myself. I started, you know, I was dating somebody at the time and you know, I was, I wasn't the best to her. I could definitely say that with confidence and I did start drinking. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I was wasn't drinking to have a good time anymore. No, and you were started, drinking to numb it, right? Yep. And I was, yeah. well, I mean, just because I didn't know what the <clears throat> fuck to do with myself, and I started harming the ones I one loved, and that started adding guilt on me, which adding more to the pile, and I'm just a fucking wreck. You know what I mean? Like I feel like 2011, man. I was just a, a bad person, and you know, people are looking at me like, oh my god, you're, you've been through so much. You're a hero. You're so inspirational, and I didn't think of it that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I did it at all. Like just a fucking wreck. So well, because your perception of yourself is different than the public's perception and they don't know the man, machinations of what your thought process is. Mm-hmm. So they look at you and, and they're just like, oh, he's a fucking hero. Meanwhile, in, in your mind, you're like, there's a lot of there's a lot of chaos going mm-hmm. on. Something a friend of mine, Rick Colbert once said to somebody don't look at me as a soldier who was in the military um look at me as an individual like yeah. you know what i mean you, you can't put a blanket and say every person in the military is a good person <laughs> i've had the biggest assholes and pieces of shit and thieves and <laughs> all the military i'll be honest it, it's true man you know or people with this uncle rico syndrome would think yeah i served in iraq so you know the world owes me shit all this stuff and like the world doesn't owe you shit. Yeah. I was that guy for a while. I was that Uncle Rico. Like the You're world talking of, Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know what I mean? He's still in the yeah. past. You know what I mean? You, yeah. you I, hate to laugh. I hate to laugh at your tragedy, but man, what an interesting thing. Well, like, this is, I use this in public speaking now and there's a moment where I watched a guy be like this at the bar and I'm people watching. Then he notices me. This is like years, years yeah, later yeah. after losing Joe. Yeah. And I'm you know, doing what I do now. And I watch this guy walk into the bar and the whole bar knows he was in Iraq because he had to make sure he was a fucking loudest and everybody knew it. And yeah. he saw me and my buddy Rick who were also at the bar and he said, you guys look like vets. I want to buy you a drink. So he walks over to where we're sitting, <clears throat> sees I'm missing a leg and he loses his shit. Oh my God, man, you're fucking here. I'm like, no man, shit happened in my life and that's that. Okay. Yeah. And I, and I started talking about what we do. We were there uh, talking about uh, organization we work for, Operation Enduring Worry, helping wounded veterans live an active lifestyle, like working as a team yeah, together, being a part of something once again, which, you know, I think is very important for when you lose part of your culture, you have to fill those voids in once again. Right. And then I asked him, so what are you doing? You know what he said? <gasps> oh, no. Nothing. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't want to say nothing, but I was like, oh, I think I'm going to go back to school and you know, I got a GI bill. It's free education, man. Like, well, I think, uh, you know, I'm, my disability checks paying for Dude, man, you need something in your life. You got to fucking you know, do like, something. Yeah, that door closed. Whether, whether you chose it to close and got out right. or it was forced out, like in a situation like this, you right. still have to find something, but that's a whole other topic. And we're going to get to that. So anyway, Joe. Earl, just know. fucking lead us, man. <laughs> yeah. So Joe passed away. All right. I'm living this horrible life. And, Things that I learned from Joe's peers of how much Joe talked about, ooh, proud of Earl of, you know, learning how to snowboard, all those active things mm-hmm. that made me happy at Walter Reed. Right. You know, so I was like, well, it'd be, Joe would be proud of me now. I'm like, fuck no, I'm a little shithead now. I say that with confidence. Right, right. I was Uncle Rico thinking the world owed me something right. for what I did in the past. I yeah. truly was, I was that person, dysfunctional veteran. Yeah, this is all I'll ever be in life. I'm like, all right, I'm going to get out there and challenge myself. For Joe, start off small, just ruck marching, doing a little like no, five it's a ruck case. march for people. Ruck, who don't okay, know. a ruck march like <clears throat> in the military, we have a giant. Look at it. We'll call it a giant backpack. We call it a ruck. So when we do ruck marching in the military, we're traveling by feet, and everything we put inside of that backpack goes in there. So it could weigh up to like 60, 70 pounds. Yeah. All right, and we're getting there by foot. Hence, ruck, ruck marching. Yeah. But I'm doing this as recreation to get myself in better shape. You know, not just, you know, going for a little stroll. I would go to Kingston Dyke and it's marked every quarter of a mile and I would put shit in a backpack and I would just get miles in, you know, get a point A, point B and reach little goals like that where eventually I start running again. 
and it just build up more and more and more. Okay. So, um, it, uh, this is all you, this is not like you in a, in a group of people or is just, this, this is just, just me you? At the t- well, it's something that I have a friend come with me, whatever it may be, but this is just me for now. And eventually I realized this wasn't for Joe anymore. These things I was doing, these goals I was reaching, like right. running tough mutters and shit like that. This wasn't for Joe anymore. This is for me. Right. And it's, it developed like this passion of being physically fit again, being active. And eventually I started joining these organizations, Operation During War, I just mentioned them briefly, or Oscar Mike, you see on my shirt here. Yeah. And both, they're different organizations, but. I have your Enduring Freedom card out there. Oh, the Enduring Warrior card? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I meant. I got you, bro. (laughs) Um, But this turned into, this isn't about Joe anymore. This is about, this isn't about Joe anymore. This isn't about me anymore. This is about. All of us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just like in the military. Right. You know what I mean? And it's, yeah, that military culture, when it's out on that battlefield, it's about those people. Uh, It's about the guys to the left and right. That's what it's about. And I'm still, I've learned to still do that here, to be a part of something once again, just like these organizations. The passion that comes with it, the physical fitness, like, um, and watching these guys reach their goals. And whether it's, you know, a blind athlete who's missing his legs, hand biking a marathon his name is Matt Bradford you know he's incredible he's a, yeah yeah he's mm. in he's in his own bike it's not like it's a tandem bike and him and I we've hand biked <laughs> the army 10 miler or half marathon in Lexington Kentucky wow. Lexington bluegrass and um you know and it it's humbling to be this like you know give me a new purpose as well there's three things we lose in the military I feel like when we take that uniform off we lose our purpose we lose that passion and we're no longer part of something bigger than ourselves. And I always challenge people in our lives. We must fill those voids in. My example is now. I'm a public speaker. Yeah. And, you know. Did I'm, you ever think you'd do that? No, not at all. Not <laughs> a, this, I mean, I was, I was going full time at University of Scranton for counseling and human services. And I'm going to get that degree. I'm 20 credits shy of my undergrad. But this yeah, fell in my you lap. you know what? You're kind of. I'd, I'd, I, I I'd, rather, I'd rather go to you than the guy with the degree. <laughs> well, one seems thing, like you know what you're talking about. Well, one of the things I discuss as a speaker is I didn't get training for it. You know, my first ever audience, I feel like ma- like big audience where I'm labeled as a speaker. Like I spoke at podiums before and this and that, but first time labeled as a speaker, I feel like was um, uh, USB Allenwood. It's a federal prison in Allenwood, Pennsylvania. I don't know if it's FCI Allenwood, but anyway, I spoke to some corrections officers there, and I, you know, I remember going there, driving there, wearing the polo shirt, wearing, you know, my hair gel, looking, trying to look professional. And I got, I parked that fucking car, and I took the polo shirt on, put a t-shirt on, and one of the organizations I support, and put a ball cap on, and got up there, and just was human. People don't want professionalism when it comes to battling, to talk about stuff like this. Yeah. I think they want something fucking real. <clears throat> Basically, it's me saying, I'm no different than you guys. There's no degree. Nothing got me here. It's my experiences. Yeah. And this is what I've dealt with in my life. And these are the tools I use to get there. Now, not everybody is cookie cuttered up in their mind. Sure. You have to step out. Of, don't cookie cutter. Well, I need to start doing stuff for my fallen brothers and sisters, like run marathons and shit like that. I have to start joining these organizations. No. And no, I said, you got to find what works for you. That's where those three P's come in. Purpose, passion, part of something. We need, and that's just not in the military. That's, that's just life in, in general. general. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. How do we get there? I'll tell you two, two things are really important to get there. You can't have that shitty ass attitude, which I see in so many fucking guys that get out of the military. And this this is who I am, deal with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm an asshole and uh, you know, I'll, I'll forever be a army ranger that was in uh, Fallujah. Like, sh- shut the fuck up, man. Nobody cares, because nobody owes you shit. Nobody owes me shit. Nobody yeah. owes anybody shit. Ch- get rid of that bad attitude. And what I feel is most important, step out of your fucking comfort zone. Because all those things we talked about, are never going to just fall in your lap. I had to step out of my comfort zone and I gave myself some motivation to get there. I was like, I'm going to do this for Joe, right? I, like, I don't want to run a tough runner, but I'm going to do one under Joe's name for him. 
You know what I mean? And then that eventually led into something. But it's something. not like you needed a group of people to be like, hey, we're all going to, I'm going to go do the, who's coming with me? And if nobody goes with me, I'm not going to go. Mm-hmm. You were doing it all for you. Like, it's a solo endeavor for you. Well, I don't get it. In the beginning, at the beginning I was. Yeah, at the, the beginning. Well, in the beginning, I was doing it with people. I remember the first Tough Mudder I did, the one in Poconos, this first obstacle course race I did. I had a bunch of my friends I think I was up there for that one. Were you really? I think so. I, I, I ran that summer. So they race. had the electricity that you're running yeah. through at the end? Oh, and yeah. Everybody's I, getting zapped? Yeah. <laughs> I was, we ran a, the Sunday race and I was, our team was one of the last ones. Cause at that time I wasn't, I was not in the shape I'm in now. Yeah. And it's my first time ever enduring something that long of a distance. And he'll believe it. I don't think it's, it's the running, it's the inclines and declines for something like this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think which made us take me such a long fucking time, you know, and it wasn't yeah, even easy. Yeah, I did check in the box. I did it. Yeah. What's next. All right. Goal after goal after goal after goal where, like I said, this is the portion of my life. This wasn't, it was about me and Joe, but then it was most mainly about me. Like, yeah, man, I could continue to do this. And I stopped thinking, what was me? The world owes me shit. I stopped thinking about that. I was like, nope, I'm going to focus on shit like this. And what came after that was guys in situations like this reaching out to me. How do I do this? How do I do that? And then I was asked to join Operation During Warrior. And our mission is helping guys like this reach their goals as a team. Okay. As a fucking team. And I, I, I think it's one thing to pay for a guy's flight. Here's your bib. Good luck. It's another why don't you join us? We could all do this together. Right. And I think that's where a humbling feeling comes into play where people start reaching their goals, you know, to watch somebody reach their goals. That's and it's humbling to watch these guys do that. But also you're not, it, they're not alone. Exactly. You have somebody there going like you, you, you got this. We're with you. Yep. And you know, we encourage them. They're going to be doing that same fucking thing to somebody else. Once again, what did I say before? Part of something bigger than yourself. You know, I feel like in our culture lately, we've turned into such a victim society. People just want to be oh. a victim. Truly, let's be real here. I don't and I disagree with you. Guy. I don't I disagree with you. I was one of that you. guy. I was one of those guys, man. And, and Fucking I, and woe I just, is me. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's like, woe is me. This sucks. Or whether it's race, whether it's religion, whether it's yeah, What are you gender, doing to change about like, it? You're doing nothing. Yeah. I said, look, man, you can't armchair this shit and just like post some bitch shit on Facebook get out there and be that difference be that change because it's not going to fucking fall in your lap yeah it's not going to fall in your you got to be that change you got to want it and you got to be a new person when I was when I was uh, god I was I must have been 10 years old right mm-hmm. and my grandfather was a teacher at, at North Scranton um, he was the, he was the electric teacher and they, they obviously they shut it down now they turned it into apartments and he was retiring and I remember I remember being at his retirement dinner and oh Jesus Christ it may have been Frank Andrews Do you remember Frank oh, yeah. Andrews shim kiss yeah mm-hmm. so he was up there and and he was telling this joke and and the punchline of the joke is this you can't win the lottery if you don't play mm-hmm. and I know that is not humorous at all. And maybe later I'll tell you the fucking joke, but (laughs) that really, even at like nine or 10 years old, that meant something to me, which means it's like, you got to go buy the ticket. Like if you don't go out and go do something, the failures in your life, you have nobody to blame, but yourself, if you go and try and do and fail, that's okay. But if you never take that fucking step, you're never going to win shit. And you're never going to be fulfilled, and you're always going to be this miserable person online arguing about some fucking stupid thing. <laughs> and, and, and then, and then, it, and then, you know, you post your stupid fucking thing, and then, and then you go back to playing fucking Sega. Yeah. <laughs> like, what effective change are you fucking making? That's oh, a good thanks, point, for, man. thanks for the opinion. You know, and you know, you can't worry about fucking what my day fucking up because you have a stupid opinion. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, know, you can't worry about what pe- other people think. Can't like, at all. I, I yeah. failed a lot in my life, man. I mean, I don't even think myself successful. I don't. I don't know. Earl, I, I don't mean to it fucking enlighten you on this. You're in a room full of fucking losers right now. Yes, <laughs> well, you are. I. I don't. Look at like, like you know, her and I, I, I fucked up a lot of shit. I mean, yeah. we haven't been through the fucking trials that you've been through, but we we have definitely been our own worst enemies a lot of the time. Yeah. You know, I feel I still am. I truly like I am still fucking human. I failed at things. I made some piss poor decisions. Even you know, recently it's, we've it, oh, we've all not had. done. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're just I, getting yeah. started. I am. All, you're right. You're yeah. absolutely right. And I'd rather be like that than look at look at some big inspirational thing. And it's like, look, well, how'd you get through it? I was like, I tried. You just fucking did it. Yeah. I just you know, I tried it. I I didn't want to be the person I was, and that's not 
how I thought is like, I can't be this person anymore. I just, what did I say? Stepped out of my comfort zone Mm -hmm. more and more and more. And then I, but how far did you step out? It's not like, it's not like you went from your position to, you know, doing ass paint. You know what I mean? We're like, well, you take like, like a paint enema and blow it up against like. Well, I feel like you have to start somewhere, even if it's something small. Like today, I, I ruck marched five miles at the Kingston Dyke, you know, and it doesn't seem like a lot, doesn't seem like much. But, you know, we fast forward maybe six years later, I'm running the Boston Marathon. Mm-hmm. You know Tell what I mean? Me about, how about that? Yes. Oh, and I, you know, how, how about last? that? If, did, wait, wait, can I ask you? Sure, did sure, you sure. fucking plan that? Oh yeah, I I told him. Okay, wait, wait, did you fucking but, no, no, plan no. that well, photo I didn't, plan it. I didn't plan it to get like the fo- the attention. No, 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 no. I planned it because all right, that's my friend Andy. All right, yeah, yeah. she's a good friend I of mine. I love her. I Andy, love Andy. Andy has seen mm-hmm. me go through a lot of endeavors physically in life. Like, right. hey, I'm about to do this 60 hour endurance event called the Spartan Agogi in oh. Vermont. Okay, mm. want to come with me? Hey, I'm about hey, to. Next sp- time you go, can can we go? Because they they just made something available to all of us. Oh yeah, in Vermont. <laughs> July first, they did it. Yeah. What's that? Recreational stuff. Marijuana. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Over my head. Fuck. Yeah. Man. Weren't you in the fucking army, man? How do you not know this? <laughs> but anyway, anyway. Back to him. But like I said, let me know. I'll bring my camera. Maybe we can do some stuff. You know what? I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> just like, you know, I don't endorse it in Pennsylvania. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, going through that with, so like with Andy, Andy. Andy's like, so we've got a great relationship. We're good friends. And here we are running Boston. And I got to be honest with you, Boston was fucking tough. I don't think I trained enough. I, I knew it was that. 27 miles, right? 26.2. And I knew that at, um, when it came down to <laughs> when I was running, uh, um, like around like mile 11 or 12, I kept cramping inside my thighs. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like every time I would run, I would cramp. Yeah. I'd go to med tent. They give me this anti cramp shit. Wouldn't work. You know, go to another med tent, anti cramp shit. Wouldn't work. The fourth med tent. It's your big dick with the elbows. <laughs> that's giving you problems. So anyway, anyway, it turned down into like, Andy, the two options are right here. I quit or I, I have to walk it. Like there's no other way. I, I keep fucking cramping and I don't know what else to do. You know? So I'm, I don't want to just call it a day. So I walked it. All right. Now, I literally walk in the fucking marathon. That's it. Like the, the second half was mainly me walking, except when I took that left turn on the Boylston when right at 26 miles. So there's like 0.2 miles left. Right. And what, at like this quarter, point, it's, it's a quarter mile, right? Doing math. Yeah. Roughly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It was about a quarter. It was, it was just on when I took that turn, I was almost at 26, but I could see the finish line in, in the distance. Now halfway, halfway through Andy decides to walk with you, right? Yeah. Well, Andy's my guide. She's oh, okay. my running guide, so oh, okay. she's with me the whole way. So your team. Andy's helping me, like, yeah. all right, let's get, like, you know, people with disabilities are allowed to have running guides, and I picked Andy as my guide because she's always been there for a lot of these endeavors for what yeah. I've been accomplishing. And it was, you know, we have the American flag, and I, I can't I can't walk this now as much as I think. <laughs> like, it's oh, right shit, there. Oh, shit, the cameras are on. Well, I'm thinking about, in my, in my mind, I'm thinking there's more people here, because a lot of people drifted away. It's it's the end of the day now. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. it's not like hour four, yeah. but there's a lot of people there. Like, a lot yeah. of people went away. But when we turn on Boylston, there's still a shitload of people there. I'm not going to fucking walk this now. I said, <laughs> so I started, I, Andy was carrying, she carried the flag most of the race. Credit's given her credit's due. Yeah. I took the flag from her and I said, can I finish carrying the flag? Like, all right. So we started running and we're almost at that finish line. And I just said to her, let's end with flavor. Let me buddy carry you. Let me buddy carry you. That was it. I buddy carry, I put her on my shoulders. She's holding up the American flag. When we crossed the finish line, that was it. All right. Went back to, um, you know, went back to the hotel. I mean, that was so, it. There's no well, sense of fucking accomplishment. Well, well, there, well, just, there was. Obviously, oh, right, there was sure. a, well, uh, there was all that. Obviously, like I never like I've had people were like, God damn, this is great. <laughs> I've had bike marathons before. I've even rush, ruck marched distances longer than marathons, oh. but it was never called a marathon. Like this is actually my first time officially running a marathon. Right. right? Not hand biking it. Now, this was post the bomb, right? Yes. This, this was post bombing, uh, right? This was four years after the bombings. OK, okay? Mm-hmm. so. You know, went back to the hotel, had pizza with the rest of the Achilles Freedom Team, who I ran with. Yeah. And I went to bed a little early because I was pretty fucking sore. Woke up the next morning. How was your taint? Was it okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was shaved. I'll say it. Fuck. Your baby I mean, powder you- is like <laughs> fucking Crisco. <laughs> so I went, you know, literally I went fucking. <laughs> you smelled like a baby turkey? <laughs> it wasn't pretty, I'll tell you that. Man. No, you're just like putting the fan up your pants. Just <laughs> We've been there. 
<laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. So you go to bed. <laughs> Next morning, I take my phone off of airplane mode, and it's just interview after interview after. Now Spartan Race headquarters. I'm, I'm, uh, I work for their honor series, all their military races. Gotcha. That's one of the okay. things I do now. Yeah. And I've been a part of Spartan Race for quite a long time now, and it's a culture I've, um, you know, I. Their headquarters is in Boston. Okay. So they called me right in. Can you come in and do a live feed interview on our Spartan page? Five million people follow that. So, and like, and I, I went back to watch all that. It's all my friends kind of, holy fuck. Like, the, everyone knows what happened at this point. Yeah. I didn't realize it went viral. Mm-hmm. You know, and then while I was there, you, I were, gotta, you were home. You were back at the hotel watching the information channel and fell asleep. I was, yeah, I was like, I had no idea like, this what turned happened. Went, I had no idea this turned and what it into. And then when I got off the phone with her, local media got a hold of me in Boston. I don't know where they got my number from, but they said we want to do an interview with you. So they came right to Spartan headquarters. I did an interview there. Another local media in Boston. They said, "Can you meet us at the finish line at whatever time?" And at this point, I'm calling Andy and I said, "Why don't you get your ass back here? Because you need to be in these interviews too." So she met me at the finish line. She was in another local media there. That's with awesome. Me. On my drive home that day, I got another local sports affiliation station from Boston. Anyway, you get the you get the idea. Mm-hmm. Right. Just over and over and over. Fox News. Yeah. I was mentioned on uh, the Today Show. Like, and you know what I did with this man? I just I ran with it because what I do now is a public, my new purpose in life. Right. This is just helping me in my mission. Yeah. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And I remember te- uh, a military, like a, a veteran owned like media company. I, I guess you could call it that task and purpose. They did the story of like, there's more to this guy than running the Boston marathon talking right. about how I lost my leg, losing mm-hmm. my brother and my mission now as a speaker. So I just ran with all the magic of social media. Yep. Help me get my message out. You know, but there I, was I, zero intention for you to try to make an impact. No, not at all. I was just being a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> Let me pick you up. Honest to God, honest to God, that's what it was. Man, I, every time I try to be a douchebag, it doesn't work out like that. Usually <laughs> you know, like, people are mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> no, and that's exactly what it was. I said to Andy, like people were like, what was the purpose? What I remember when I I was on Fox and Friends, what was the meaning behind you carrying her? I was like, just to add a little flavor to the end of the day. There was no meaning behind it. There was nothing. But now I'm here talking to you. Like, is there anything I remember Fox News, they said to me, is there anything you'd like to do and talk about? Um you know, anything you would like to say to our nation out there. And like, it's Fox News, a million people watch this shit. Yeah, yeah. And I know how biased Fox News could be. Let's be real. I know how biased CNN could be. And I just they went out there. Are. You know, yeah. I, just, I just went out there and I said, look, there's a huge divide in this country. And four years ago, at that same place where I did that, bombings went off and this country was had another terrorist attack. I don't give a shit what, you, what people call it. Yeah, I don't it care was, if it's it was, domestic. It, I don't it care was if it's a terrorist foreign. attack. Yeah. Yeah. Was, I don't give a fuck what people say. It was a terrorist attack. You yeah. Know? And I just said, um, you saw such a camaraderie where everybody lifted themselves up to move forward and help each other out at the day of those bombings. And you saw it on 9-11. Let's continue to carry that together and do that for, for us. And because you know, I didn't want to make it about who's right and who's wrong, because I think a lot of people right on one side right and a lot of people right wrong on both moved. sides. Yeah, right now. Mm-hmm. I, didn't, I said, you know, one thing, this is the only thing I'm going to say about Trump. He said he wanted to help bring the country back together as one and I don't think he's doing it. I'm not that's all I'm going to say about it right now. Well, I'm going to say this in my platform to say it right now. You know, I don't like to talk about politics, but maybe this will I don't know. I'm just some fucking peon, but maybe somebody's going to hear, hear that and understand it. We got to stop this bullshit yeah. in this country, mm-hmm. man. Like I hear I'm hearing and the media sucks at it. <clears throat> Fox News is guilty of it. CNN is guilty of it. Let's be real. MSNBC is guilty of it. They're all guilty yeah, of yeah, it. They're all is. guilty of it. But anyway, that was if anything, Alex Jones is right. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I totally like I, I, I and I and I and I think, you know, Stacy like and I have I still to this day I have zero idea like where you kind of stand. Mm-hmm. Um, I like it I, that way. I think <laughs> I think you're absolutely right. right. I think I think it's a it's a it, there's some sort of divide and conquer mentality when at the end of the day, like. Who was it? Kennedy said, like, you know, we all bleed the same blood. We all breathe the same air. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. there's, it, it, 
that I always thought that if you take if you if, as graphic as it may sound, if you rip everyone's flesh off, we kind of all look the same. Exactly. You, you know, know I mean? we have our we have the, our own hopes, dreams, desires, fears. You know, it's just different cultures. I feel like in society, and I, and I don't mean race when I say that. I mean cultures, yeah. and I think that's what people need to understand. And I respect found that most people. of it is a misunderstanding. Uh, you're yeah, absolutely. You're right with that. I agree with you on that. Like. Um, I mean, around yeah. here, it's like, fuck those Italians. But yeah, you can't have a conversation <laughs> with anybody, especially no, around no, no. here. No, no, no. And it's <laughs> like, it's like. Uh, You're right, Stacey. You are right. It, you are right. If you, it, you can't talk to a group of people and convince them of anything, uh, you know, exce- except for something dangerous. You can talk to a person and get, and, and, and even agree to disagree, but at least you understand. Right. And, and I there's think not hate support. there. Exactly. Yeah. It seems like when somebody disagrees with you, then they, they try to make it personal. Like it's they, not. they attack mm-hmm. you personal when you don't agree with them. And I'm like, hold on and a second, guys. And it gets real quick. It's like yeah. real yeah, fast. Yeah. And I, I, I believe in, I believe in brunettes. You believe in redheads. Do we need to fucking fight about I it? I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's still an issue. Would and you, you know, say NEPA's biggest export is gossip? That's my saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. I like that. <laughs> You're welcome. You can use that, man. <laughs> so Earl, any, whatever I can do to help you <laughs> do <laughs> your speeches. <laughs> and you know, if there's a way to get me 0.02% of whatever you don't get paid at these things, <laughs> like I'd be happy to do that you know what man i think <coughs> even as a speaker to talk about stuff like this i try not to because i feel like i'm not here to talk politics i'm not here about a I don't separation think it's politics i think it's i think it's people i right. think well somebody once asked me a question when colin kaepernick first started kneeling during the national anthem and somebody the rhetoric asked, behind that bothers well me. hang on a second what somebody said to me though what do you think of that and i squashed it real quick and i said it is right and i paused and i said I'm not a fan of it. I'm not. I'll be honest with you. But it's his right. So who am I to fucking judge? Next yeah. question. Mm-hmm. And I, that was it. I just, that's it. Basically, it was me saying. Well, they want you to get incensed and enraged. Yeah. And well, say, I, I think sometimes when you have a podium like that, people, you, they think no matter what you say, you're right. And I'm, I'm not saying, and I, I'm not about to do that. I'm here to give ideas and may possibly help some people out. I'm not mm-hmm. here to talk politics or I or. Those type of like one culture should be doing well, they're, this they're, they're, and that they're they're right they're, they're wrong. They're divisive topics. Exactly. They're, yeah, it's identity politics. It's it's a way identity it's a way politics. to separate us. Yes. 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 Yeah. Identity politics and the problem with identity politics is people never ever ever want to admit their side is wrong. Like no. when it, when it become when your when your political view becomes your identity, by far it's self fucking destructing and self righteous oh it's like, terrible my mm-hmm. side is right so you're <clears throat> a racist or my side is right so you're a fucking snowflake you know what I mean mm-hmm. and it, it's it's dangerous and that's what's happened in this country I truly do believe that well, I mean, and it, it goes, it, goes, it goes back to it, it, you know whatever anybody thinks about the Chinese like Sun Tzu had a good idea it's like you know it, you know to, to defeat your enemy you have to love your enemy but first you have to love your enemy mm-hmm. you know and then, and then, when you love your enemy, to understand them as a, as a person, and not be like, "I want to blow that motherfucker's head off," or "I want to fucking," you know. When people were like, "We should turn Iraq into a glass parking lot," I was like, "I, no, that's man. not the no, move. no, 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 no. That's you know not I mean? how things are done. That is not how things are done. You know, one of the things I loved about what Obama did was when he actually when when they found out where Bin Laden was, and I guess he wanted to he like. <laughs> I guess, mil- I, from my understanding, it, maybe I'm wrong, but people just wanted to bomb where he was. And actually, he was like, no, let's, because there's innocent people around there. Yeah, collateral like, damage. Yeah, right, so let's just send SEAL Team 6 in there and take them out. And, you know, th- I, from my understanding, that mission getting in there, it's, it's sometimes not that easy just to put a chopper down and what there was no casualties on the American side from my understanding you don't know what you're walking into except you know he's in there and that's it yeah but and, and they're a mile away from Pakistan's version of West Point mm. to point. go mm. do that so in my you know what I mean like, so what I think about is like how he did and I don't mean to talk politics but that was I, I don't even consider that politics but I always like I, I like that I like that he was like we're gonna send our best in there trained to take him out, you know what I mean, and that's what they did. And I, I was like, you know, well, instead, a lot instead, of people, of, and instead of cutting with the sword, we're gonna do it with a scalpel. You know what I mean? Put it, and that's, mm-hmm. I mean, that's like back to Vietnam. Like Nixon was like, let's do. Uh, in 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 something, there was something in in the documentary. Where it was like in the first in the first like 
six months or something, there was more bombs dropped than the entirety of all the Allied and 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 the Nazi forces in the entirety of World War Two. They dropped that many bombs. Wow! Just in Vietnam. I mean, you're mm-hmm. it's a fucking jungle. Like you can't. So I mean, to mm-hmm. to to do that and not understand the people. I mean, if you're going to go into a country or you want to try to understand, you know, if I want to understand, comp- you know, people that are competitors of mine, like if I might fucking from the front of it be like, I hate you. <laughs> but then, like when I talk to them, I'm like, oh my god, man, they're just they're just pigs at the trough like me, just trying to get their fair share, and there's enough food for everybody, and I need to lose my ego and my attitude. You know, because everybody deserves the same shot that I do and the same opportunities. And I like how you put ego. Oh, I have. I totally fucking have one. I just try to. <laughs> I just try to well, you're suppress having, it. But you have humility, though, and you under, <clears throat> and you recognize it. You have. I'm. I, I'm always afraid of of <laughs> stones getting thrown at me. <laughs> you know, they that would out sin cast the first stone. Right. <laughs> I'm never throwing a rock, man. Good. I'm never throwing a rock, and I and I and I don't expect anyone else to throw a rock. But people will. Of Even, course they and, will. And it's my and, mentality. And they'll throw for no fucking reason sometimes. No, so they're just like, oh, everybody's throwing rocks at that guy. Let's throw rocks at that guy. Exactly. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, that's what social media does. Let's yeah, be fucking yeah. real here, man. Well, I mean, you you like concerts, right? Mm-hmm. You ever go to a concert and you're like, wow, nobody's fucking enjoying this, and it takes that one girl with a hula hoop to go up front. And then well, everybody normally goes. Normally, it's Earl with uh, taking his leg off with uh, what's <laughs> what dropkick, it, Murphy's. dropkick Murphy's. He's on stage. I saw you with on them. stage. How the yep. hell did that happen? So, um, that was for shipping up to Boston yep. too, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so a long time ago, they, they had a um, one of their old bagpipe players. His name was Scruffy, and I uh, I've been a Dropkick fan so since I was a kid. A you know. Name. Yeah, and Scruffy's so Scruffy's perfect. Scruffy's actually name. he was in the Canadian Armed Forces, and I think he was something like, not maybe elite, like something higher up. So yeah. they were playing at the Electric Factory, and my buddy and I were there. And there's a bar attached to the Electric Factory, and somebody came down. I'm wearing a kilt, and I'm seeing, uh, you know, missing a leg, and yeah. somebody came down. I said, "Would you lose that in the military?" I was like, "Yeah." It was like somebody here wants to meet you. And it was the bagpipe. And it, it was, was fuzzy. It was scruffy. It was, it was scruffy. It, yeah, it was, I called him fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he respectfully he did, he's not part of Dropkick Murphy's anymore. He's spending time with more time with his family now. But at that time, he said, totally my, I was there with my buddy Damien, and he said, "You want to go backstage and watch the show?" I'm like, "Fuck yeah, man!" You know? Yeah, yeah. And you know, that's pretty damn cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's like having Mick Jagger be like, "Hey, come on." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like I guess you know he was in the military. And I was so like, yeah. "Yeah, man, come on back." And then, honestly, out of respect, I didn't know who Scruffy was at the time, but I thought this is fucking cool you know yeah. so I went back there and played shipping out the boss and I just kind of strolled out there put my leg on and that was <laughs> that that was like in what 2012 so now every other time I've seen them like I, I do wait do they call you up on stage they don't, they don't call me up I just crowd surf up there they say, oh look there's that guy they probably don't even know my name like Ken and all those like wonderful human beings oh one legged Steve's one- back <laughs> <laughs> so I get up there and I sing with them and I love it man like they're but I mean yeah, but the crowd goes fucking crazy mm-hmm. like when you do that I mm-hmm. know and you're not even part of the band you're a fan <laughs> but you know what I, I love about it though and they don't look at it as like, oh, I don't want to, like, they don't look at it as, oh, this might ruin our set or like, I have a way I do things. And no, we're all this like, together, man. Exactly, yeah. man. Like, yeah. yeah, this is, oh, let's have fun with this. Come on up, man. And like you said, he gets that crowd going. I look at the Dropkick Murphys, they're normal human beings that, that want to do good. You look at their, the Clauda Foundation, which helps, like that Ken Casey, he's, their, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a lead dude. He, um, <clears throat> you know, his foundation in helping inner city um, kid, inner city families, and inner city people. Like, um, they have they have a chapter in Boston. They have right. a chapter in D.C. They have a chapter in Philadelphia. And they're just normal guys who want to make music. From my understanding, they're just dudes who want to make music, have a good time, maybe drink a few beers, and they're giving back as well. And with their so, Clotta Foundation, and it's something I I was just like, what's not to like about these dudes, man? You know. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Exactly. You know. Nothing. Like, they're fucking so are you, good dudes. Are, you, are you getting into fucking Hollywood? Well, yeah, I was just going to ask about that. Like you did stuff on Homeland, right? The TV show Homeland. Mm -hmm. You're on NBC. Did you meet Claire Danes? Very briefly. (laughs) Can I tell you a crazy story? Go ahead. About Claire Danes? Can I tell you a crazy story about... I, did I cut you off and now you're mad yeah, at me? Yeah, you did. No, 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 it's, no. Okay. it's my birthday. I can do what I want. <laughs> I'm kidding. Go ahead. You shut your mouth. Um, <laughs> so I was, um, I was in L.A. 
and my friend was working on. Do you remember the movie Public Enemies with Johnny Depp about uh, like gangsters in like the 30s and 40s? I know of it. I haven't seen it. Though. All right, so that was directed by Michael Mann. And if you've right. ever seen Heat, like that's the guy who directed that. Check. So I had an uh, I had a I had an uh, basically an audition to go be Michael Mann's assistant. So I had to sit out and wait to go meet with him. So I'm sitting there, and I'm, I think I'm reading like an Us Weekly or something. I don't know why it was even in there. And uh, this like beautiful woman just comes and sits right down next to me, and we start having a conversation. You know, how's your day? Oh, you know, where are you from? Blah, blah, blah. And then Michael Mann walks out. I never see Michael Mann. He's like, mm. Claire, come on, let's go have a chat. And I'm like... Fucking my so-called life, Claire Danes. I was just sitting right next to the, that's who I was talking to. She's so nice. She's so pretty. I wonder if she'll date me. Um, so yeah, that's that's my little. But I loved Homeland, man. What season were you on? I was on six season, first episode, I think. What'd and you it, do? It I didn't. Was, I, I, honestly, there was a scene after they where killed what's his face. I was like, I, I'll be honest with you. I have never watched a show, even the episode that I was in. Are you shitting me? No, I. I you know what I do? You know what TV show I watch? I'm one of those fucking guys on Netflix that continues to just watch The Office. That's all oh, I fucking yes, do. There's nothing new to learn. The Office. Oh, I fucking yeah, love it, man. You know, and maybe I just appreciate more because I'm from Scranton, you know. <laughs> but it's, can, uh, wait, can I tell you another funny Hollywood story? What's up? So, do you know who Richard Donner is? He directed all the Lethal Weapon movies. Okay. All right. So he did Superman. He did the original Superman in like 1978. He did The Omen. Like guys, his wife produces all like the X-Men movies, Lauren mm-hmm. Schuler Donner. So I was working this movie for DreamWorks called Hotel for Dogs. And they said, all right, you got to go over to Donner's place. We have a gift for him for Christmas, right? So I go over to Donner's place and I'm like, uh, is, is Richard in? And they're like, who? And I'm like, Dick. And they're like, oh yeah, he's in the, he's in the back. Because De Niro, they, they, it's called Bob. Right. You don't call him Robert. <laughs> And I hear his voice, I got this big boisterous voice. And I think I had like a fucking edible arrangement or something like that. And I, I said, all right, well, this is for him. And I get on the elevator and the office had just come out, right? And I have, my buddies went to NBC and bought me a, an office hat from the gift shop. So I'm wearing my office hat. And these two guys get on the elevator who I know are like fucking famous writers and I can't remember their name. Right. <clears throat> and I'm at the front door, they're in the back. And all I hear is like giggling. And I'm like, oh, because I'm totally insecure. And I'm like, oh, they're like, is my ass hanging out? Like, what the fuck? Like, do I have a boogie? Like, whatever. <laughs> and uh, I kind of turned around and I went, hey, what's up? And they're like, they're like, we're sorry. Like, we were just admiring your hat. <laughs> and I went, and I went, what? They're like, yeah, well, we're admiring your hat. Now, be, now before in LA, I would never tell anybody I was from Scranton because nobody knows where the hell it is, and I don't right. want to explain it. <laughs> and they're like, oh, we're admiring your hat, and I'm like, oh, I said, yeah, I'm from there. And their uh, fucking elevator stopped, and they're like, tell us about it. <laughs> oh my gosh! Like, tell us all about Scranton. And I'm Ray like, Dan Coopers. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like. Uh, poor Richard's pub does not look like that. We do not have a TJ Fridays. We do not have uh, any of that shit. And I'm like no Lake Scranton, Chili's. Yeah. The Chili's. Mm-hmm. And I'm like Lake Scranton. Oh, yeah. They made look they like don't Club have a Med. Beach. Yeah, there's no beach. Yeah. Now on the same show I was working on was the cat was the location scout for for the office. And I on the Christmas break I came home and I came back and I'm like, here's all the photos of all the places that you do not have that I know are on your board. <laughs> No shit. Yeah, and uh-huh. so then she, then I said, in Lake Scranton, don't ever fucking do that again. It's it's black <laughs> yeah. rock. It's terrible. You can't yeah. go swimming in there. Yeah, I and am. she goes, she goes, well, funny story about that because it was when Ed Helms was wearing like the sumo suit and yes. he was rolling yeah. out yep. there. She goes, uh, she goes, well, funny story about that. And I'm like, what's the funny story? She goes, um, we didn't tell Ed, but the day before, right where we shot, they found a body. In the yeah, water. Oh, I yeah. think I heard that. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, really? And I was like, no shit, you guys never. T-. Well, she's like, he would never have went in the water. So <laughs> we didn't tell him. And we just put him out there in the sumo That's suit. That's funny. And I was like, oh my God, these little things. So I said, I said, I said, if you guys want to shoot Scranton, go up to Burbank. Burbank looks like the hill section of Scranton. Like huh. you, you will never, like all the trees look the same. Minus like the bee. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. That random so, bee. So, um, but yeah, so you That's were my on, little Hollywood story. You were on like, uh, you know, NBC Spartan Race. I mean, you've been doing so much stuff. Like, I know you've been traveling all over mm-hmm. the place. Like, I just got a, um, I just had a audition last week for a commercial. Uh, uh, Nationwide Dove? Insurance. Oh, no. <laughs> Nationwide Insurance. But, you know, I got the call yesterday. Actually, I didn't think I got it because the way how I, you know, and it looked like they were looking for some 
you know, maybe an amputee or something. Oh. And I feel mm-hmm. like that's where a lot of this stuff comes in. We need an amputee for I thought, this. I thought you were going with, they were looking for someone with the other leg. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, um, you know, the scene was, um, I had to show myself sitting next to it, sitting in a chair next to a bathtub, taking my leg off and just putting the water on and checking the water. And that's basically <laughs> it. And I didn't think I got it because it was so fucking quick. You know what yeah. I mean? They're like, all right, leave. And I'm like, damn, Hollywood's like, they, they're like. <laughs> oh, the casting process yeah. is brutal. Dude, they're like, you know, I, I just like a tiny little five second relationship with somebody. But they, they didn't want any of that. If you have an insecurity, do out. not be there. Dude, I, I got to yeah. tell you, man. And I, you know, you always leave. You leave that shit. You're like, they what hated the fuck? me. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, actually, that's exactly they what I thought. They hated me. Honestly, God, that's what yeah. I thought. Every time I've done something. So I didn't think I got it. Yesterday, I got a call. They want me to come in for a call next week, and the filming is two weeks later. And both of those times, I'm like, that's all you got? And like, dude, I'm on the road speaking, man. And I'm like, oh, fuck that. Make time. Take the money. Well, I'm trying to do that you now. Get the residual well, money if it's a national ad. Mm-hmm. Well, you get money like, for a long time. I don't know how any of this shit works. Honest to God. And Earl, when, yeah. we, when, we, when we hit stop, well, we're going to make sure. Yeah, well, we actually, got you. you know what your did game. I do? Mm-hmm. I, I emailed. Well, I'm speaking in Minnesota the day of the call. But you and then we'll change hands. their whole fucking shooting schedule. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I emailed where I'm speaking in Minnesota. Right. And I, and I asked them, is there any way we extend it like two days after? Yeah. You know, I have nothing then. And then the day of filming, I'm actually going to be speaking in Louisiana. And I'm trying to do the same thing with them there. I was like, can you push this a little? Are like, you in L.A.? No, they're filming in New York City. Oh, dude, do, do so it. So, like, you know, but I'll be in, I'll be mainly in the Midwest for, I got a little tour going on of speaking and shit like that. Right. And I want to do this. I do. But it's just like, I also hate turning down something where. Yeah, but you know, tell them, but at the same time, man, everything, every, every good, positive um, incredible thing that you're doing right now that your your humility is at you know 104,000 degrees <laughs> this will only help you know you and other people and 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 fellow vets and you know people who just who just you know n- need to have more awareness and more camaraderie that they don't think that they have. I think this is a great move. Well, I'm hoping it works out. You, yeah, you know, call I them really up and say, look, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> well, this we, is what, this I'm is why star. I'm going to come this down. Don't you know who I, I am? Yeah, I need to, am Never. I first on the call sheet? I better be number one on the call sheet. I, I think people, I, I think people who, I think they'd understand. Well, I, I think I'm they I'm working would. on it. I'm working yeah. on it, hopefully. You know, That's I good. never thought, like, a lot of this stuff, I don't look for it. I just get asked, hey, we got this going on. We, that somebody recommended you. Like, because I never thought acting would be my, like, thing sometimes. You know, I've seen you do it. You know how to do it. Yes. Yeah, I, I guess. You know why? <laughs> You're fearless. Oh, I look like a fool doing it if sometimes. If you give zero shits, you can be an incredible <laughs> actor. The hard part is remembering the lines. That's it. Good point. Everything <laughs> else, I watched you. Remember when you're doing the animated stuff here? I'm like, I'm like, Earl fucking cares nothing. I know, but it's so funny. <laughs> oh, and every time hysterical. you would do a new take, I was like, I was like, oh my god, like he's just like, he's like, whatever shits he didn't give about the last one, he gives twice as less shits about this <laughs> one. <laughs> and that's the stuff that becomes memorable. It's fearless. Mm-hmm. It's the same why you know I think I think comedians make the best dramatic actors because they've they've already looked foolish and they don't care right you know so they're willing to put put it out there and 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 be awesome yeah. you yes. have to do nationwide is on your side uh, <laughs> can you see if they'll sponsor our podcast there Holy you go shit. that would be fantastic yeah all we need is like a thousand dollars a week we'll be fine we'll yeah. be fine it's a small investment for them and i know how much insurance money they pay i'll even switch my carrier there you go you talk to them see what it see what uh. happens hopefully they'll listen to this nationwide you're so good you're so, so good. good you're so good and you know what the best thing about your coverage is? It's nationwide. It's <laughs> That's the beauty of it. <laughs> so, Earl, what else do you have coming up? Anything that you can talk about? If I did a movie, would you be in it? Oh, absolutely. All right, keep going. Yeah, I mean, okay. I just wanted to get that in no, there before. There, if just, anything, yeah. I would try my damnest really if The Office ever came back. And, like, have Dwight steal my leg as I'm working on the beat farm or some <laughs> shit like that. I just thought, uh, Rain Wilson, if you hear me out there, bro, if you, you know, you know, have Moe's, I don't know, do something, throw me under a tractor. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> beats I mean, Battlestar Galactica. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to represent right here. Oh, I mean, all roads lead here, brother. Yes. All roads so, I mean, lead here. I mean, next pro I, a lot of what I have this summer is um, speaking quite a bit. 
um, and a lot of events like just your typical Spartan races helping mm-hmm. guys out or with these organizations I work for and I always tell people I get these awards like two weeks ago the Daughters of the American Revolution gave me this nationwide award and it was so like and it's every time I get this stuff like in you know, two weeks prior to that ironically in DC I got an award from the Attorney General that one of these prisons put in for my volunteer work and it's like I say every time it's like I am not doing this shit alone yeah. I have wonderful mm-hmm. guys like in my guys in Operation During Warrior and Oscar Mike and even you know someone like Andy mm-hmm. like like there's Absolutely. like there's it just it seems like I'm not like a face for this and it's like I'm not this isn't just me doing it. Maybe you just see my stuff because I have a big social media platform, or maybe I just work. And you're these not differently. being sold out either. Like you're being genuinely you, and you're putting your foot down. Like this is who I am. This is who I want to be. Mm-hmm. And you're not. You don't have to answer to other people also, too, which is great. There's nothing wrong for speaking people outside of you. Yeah. Like the thing, the beauty of that is like when you walk up. Like I hope you fucking walk up there and be like, "This is not for me." You know, if you do that, like... Well, there, uh, there has been, you know, certain organizations. I shouldn't name them, but it's... They, PETA. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of, like, this, the veteran suicide thing, I feel like a lot of people know me. Like, I don't use the number 22, which is such a hot item right now. Like, oh, 22 veterans kill themselves a day. Like, That's Paul another two-hour podcast. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, oh, you're absolutely right. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't use that shit because I feel like it's so watered down. And there's a certain organization, I'm not going to use it. They wanted to use my story and everything about what I do. It wasn't that I feel like I didn't feel like it wasn't making a difference in this world. I think it was just to build their organization. It was exploitive. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck you. No, ain't doing it. And I'm starting to see the ones that are like that. Like, so the company I work for, Oscar Mike, now I was in a time in my life where I feel like, you know, I have a people and I'm trying to be humble here but people like yeah. know my you, know own shirt. Dude, okay. you have your own heroes line t-shirt <laughs> which well, anyway, we all have <laughs> yeah they, uh, they, uh, they started to like they this random company saw me on Facebook Oscar Mike and see the work I do and they said would you come in and be on actually it was a podcast talking about veteran suicide and I wasn't the only one doing it I was I was the one representing Afghanistan we had somebody representing the Iraq war Mm -hmm. and they even they they had somebody from Vietnam Korea and even World War II and we all talked about mental health and military that's fucking awesome it was amazing and the next day we ran what was called the gladiator assault challenge up in Wisconsin um, and which is the beat, meat and potatoes, what Oscar Mike does. You know, they help wound the veterans live an active lifestyle. And they say, we see you run Spartan races with Operation During Worry. We want to bring you in and, you know, just be a part of us. And I got to be honest with you. Like, I was talking about a bad organization that want to exploit me. Yeah. This organization, I mean, it's my bread and butter now. I After that, I was 2014. And I said to these guys, I was like, look, I am your guinea pig. I see where your heart is at. I see where you're you know, your mission. And I see the passion you have to have people live a better life. You know what I mean? And it's like, we're not wounded warrior project. We're not grunt style. I think it's own entity that it's just, I've never seen anything like it before. And I was so amazed with these guys that I was like, and that's a company I just went with. And when did they start doing, they said, we want you in our commercials, like social media shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. like, and I'm running through the woods carrying, Cindy, my center block. We didn't really talk about her at all, but like, um, she's beautiful. <laughs> yes. Cindy is, what what Cindy is is a center block. I use in my public speaking and in my races. And what she represents is, you know, she's heavy. She's a center block with chains around her. Cindy represents the he- the heavy mental adversity that society is going to face: guilt, depression, stress, anxiety. You get the idea. All that bad shit we talk about, right? All that bad shit that doesn't make us feel good. Right. As humans, we're resilient and we're going to figure it out. We're going to push through it. You know, like, okay, hit a roadblock. What are we going to do now? But when that weight gets too heavy and it keeps, you find us in bed, we don't want to do anything with ourselves. The idea of Cindy is when we race in Oscar Mike, we all carry Cindy together. We all take turns. And that's the metaphor for up in here. Meaning you don't have to carry that heavy shit by yourself. Right. You know what I mean? Something, Which is such a great message. Right. It's something very personal in my life. Something <clears throat> like I just developed and I didn't think it would turn into something like this. Now Next thing I know, people are are making key changes to Cindy and mailing them to me. People are getting tattoos of Cindy, like Oscar Mike. Are you fucking kidding me? No, I'm mm-hmm. not kidding, That's man. That's awesome. It's a, but in my mind, I'm like, wow, this turned into something I had no idea it would turn into. I just used it in my speeching and racing with these guys. And now right. Oscar Mike made a commercial with me running with Cindy in the woods up in northern Illinois. And it, it just... Um, 
that is one of the things I use in my speeches now. This commercial, uh, you know, I would air that commercial and discuss Oscar Mike, and then I would discuss Cindy with that and understand. Look, this is a then reminder. You guys had like a candle at dinner. <laughs> oh yeah, Cindy. And I, <laughs> what is she? I was on. She's Fo- picking up the tab. I was on Fox <laughs> Business News for this program called the Wonder Warrior Experience, and I told them leading up to it, I'm bringing. I'm bringing a, you know, I talk to producers, discuss what I'm going to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was other wounded veterans who were making a difference in our community. Yeah, yeah. And I said, I'm going to have Cindy with me and she's a center block and she's going to be in a duffel bag. So when I came down to in the middle of I'm being interviewed by, I can't remember her name of Fox news. And she said, so tell me about Cindy. I was like, Oh, she's in this duffel bag right now. Oh my God. Somebody's in the fucking duffel bag. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, What's the future, man? What's mm-hmm. what's next? Keep doing what you're doing, or I'd love to get my degree, but life has to slow down first. My advisor at the University of Scranton said, "I went to her when my life turned into what it is now," and she actually said, "We're not going anywhere." Mm-hmm. So, oh, when, the U? Well, no, the the U's not going anywhere. Well, <laughs> well, she said like the University of Scranton isn't going anywhere. Like when you're like, when you're ready to get this degree, and she, I needed that encouragement, saying like. What you're doing is important. You should be doing this. Come back and get that degree when you're ready. And I really want How many more to, credits yeah. do you need? 20. It's like What's a that, two semesters? Yes, it's a year. C- can you do online? A lot of what University of Scranton provides is um, in this type of degree. Yeah. Like I have to do volunteer work. and But they want to keep Oh, yeah, it, what are you doing now? Exactly. <laughs> but they want to keep, keep it local in the Scranton area. And I just, I'll be, I, last semester I had at University of Scranton, I tried to juggle my crazy life it is now and that, and it just didn't work out. And I, mm-hmm. and it, that's when I went to my advisor and she gave me the feedback I just discussed. And she's like, and she, she kind of said, keep doing what you're doing. It's important. And that felt good to me. It like, is, okay, dude. then I, you know, I kind of needed to have somebody say that to make sure, is this a smart decision? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's a totally smart decision. And, I, and I'll be honest with you, this new purpose of being a speaker, you know, these little endeavors of acting or getting out there, being a part of these organizations, making a difference in people's lives, not just in the veteran community, I think society in general. Mm -hmm. I think what I talk about as a speaker, anybody can relate to it, battling adversity. Sure. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Playing a victim. It's a universal concept. Absolutely. Playing a victim and understanding like we we are a a culture of it seems like everybody wants to be a victim now. I don't know where this just came overnight, mm-hmm. but I have to just, we have to stop that. Because now we have a, an internet diary. Yeah. Yeah, um, absolutely. If if I can, mm-hmm. right before we end, because we're at the Lord, we're almost as long as Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. <laughs> um, Nationwide could possibly pay tuition for the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's on your side. <laughs> they will definitely be that. Um, can, can I just say that you, you and I have, have been like ships in the night passing each other over the last, God, I think when Jake was with you, um, remember oh, Jake yeah. Stevens? Yeah. Jake, wonderful mm-hmm. human being. Oh, his, one of the best photographers I've ever his seen. His program that he created, Veterans Mission, in 2013, when he asked me, I want to do a quick little video documentary on you, like yeah. seven, eight minutes. Yeah. Every time I speak, the audience sees that. And I tell mm-hmm. them that. It is incredible. And I, I play, I, I said that commercial. Jake's so good. And Oscar Mike. Yeah. I play that seven minutes and that minute video of me and Oscar Mike running with Cindy. Mm-hmm. That's, and I've made tons and tons where I, I haven't made it, but I was asked to, hey, be in this media piece, be in this talk about suicide awareness i've been in tons after that but i always use jake's because i think he the way he how captured he captured it perfectly yeah. yeah. was great yeah. you know, and people like my buddy rick said to me like that's kind of old like don't you want to update it and it's like that. no and wow. i have and i have newer content but i don't know the way jake did it and if he's jake you're out there looking bro like i oh he'll know. I, I, I always mm. say like i give him somewhat credit it's like because you came to me i remember we had lunch at a um, what the heck the Irish restaurant downtown Kildare's Kildare's yeah we had lunch at Kildare's when he he reached out to me and just yeah. said hey we'll grab lunch and I want to tell you my idea of what to do and I was like yeah we could do that he's and, so soft soft oh, spoken and monotone wonderful human being <laughs> yeah. and he's humble because he he does amazing work he showed me when I first met him he's like he's like do I see some of the photos that I did in LA during the riots and I'm like yeah I want to see some of the photos you did with the riots right and I'm used to like I don't know if lenses make sense to you but like a hundred millimeter lens is like something you would shoot like a football game with right like an NFL game mm-hmm. right um 100 millimeter lens is something you would shoot in a riot to be like, all right, I'm safe over here. Jake had on like a fucking 25, which is like a GoPro. 
And he's running up to people like with fires and, and looters and just like closer than you and I are right now, just being like, <laughs> like that. And I looked at him and I'm like, dude, like, are you fearless? Like in these, and he's like, got to get the shot. <laughs> Love it, man. And I'm yeah. like, That's you are passion, a true bro. photojournalist yes. and like a great that. storyteller. Like so, mm-hmm. um, you want to come back and talk with us one day? Maybe we can talk about, um, yes. I do, I do think there's a lot of issues that you can bring, uh, a lot of clarity to, or at least perspective. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love to. And then maybe it won't be my birthday that day. <laughs> Dude, my phone's fucking birthday, blowing up. Man. Tell him happy birthday. My yes. phone's blowing up from people being like, happy are we birthday. going over your house? Or like, what's going on? Or, and I'm like, I'm not answering any of it. So um, do you have anything else? No, no. I think it was great. Earl. Hey, you're man. so fucking I'm generous, yes. man. Thank you so much. You're honored. Yeah. Generous, oh. man. <laughs> Thank you for having me, man. And ladies and gentlemen, think of Vietnam veteran. I mean, it. Got to say it. I think I mm-hmm. thank you. I th- everybody I see. I I just you know I have some buddies and 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 they don't want it and they're humble about it, but it does feel good. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Well, I yes, appreciate. We that. appreciate I, I, yeah, there's there's veterans who, that, that I'm friends with that are like, don't I don't need fucking thanks. Oh. But if you don't, they're like, you didn't fucking thank me. Jeez, <laughs> ah, you don't have to thank me, man. I just do well, my shit. Well, thank man. you. We I'm, appreciate you. Stacey, I'm so always proud of you. See, always, always great to see you. Stacey. Always good to see you. I'm proud of everything that you're doing. I'm proud of. I'm proud of the fact that you're from here. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm just proud, man. Carbondale. Carbondale. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Carbondale. And with that. <laughs> what's up? Is there, what's, is there like good food up there or something? Carbondale? I've never Frank's been up there place. enough. Frank's Place in Simpson. Yeah. You know, it's, it, I always say it's pretty much Carbondale, Frank's Place. Frank's Place? Yeah, I don't think they have police enforcement and I don't think they have a mayor. So <laughs> I don't, I, I, I think they have, uh, you know, I think the state troopers have to come. So I'm like, you're pretty much fucking Carbondale, all right? Like, you're like, oh, it's Simpson. I'm like, no, it's fucking Carbondale. I grew up there, all right? I used to ride my bike to Simpson all the time, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right, man. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so awesome, much. Guys. Thank you so right. much. Thank you're you for having welcome. me. You're very welcome. Thank you. <laughs>